Here, there's also testimony that Maxwell would direct a room full of underage girls to kiss, dance, and touch one another in a sexual way for the defendant Maxwell and Epstein to watch. Well, part three and part two of the Jeffrey Epstein files have been released today, January 4th, 2024. If you have not yet seen the complete summary of part one, I have a 25 minute video. You can find it easily just by going to ehack.com. You can see my written summary, the actual documents. We'll have these documents up there as well. And this 25 minute uh, video summary that I posted on YouTube. But for now, let's get to some of the juicy new things that came out uh, on the Epstein files or in the Epstein files. And we're going to be talking Bill Clinton, blackmail, pedos, the person who had to clean up after Jeffrey Epstein, how much Virginia, who is one of the underage, uh, 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 alleged sex trafficked uh, girls, how much she's looking for in restitution. How many dollars? Is it thousands, hundreds, millions? We'll talk about that. We'll also uh, break down uh, what happened to the detective, the lead detective, uh, and we'll touch a little bit on Tucker Carlson's uh, interview with Jeffrey Epstein's brother. There's a lot to cover. First, we'll just go in order here. Page 50 uh, of the uh, part two drop. There's a part two drop and a part three drop. Uh, part two, page 50, Alan Dershowitz. This is the uh, Harvard law professor and a criminal law attorney. Sharon Char uh, Churcher is a journalist who's working with Virginia to prod more information out of her. She emails Virginia and says, quote, we all suspect Alan is a pedo, though we have no proof of that. You probably met him when he was hanging put with J.E., Jeffrey Epstein. Yikes. Uh, then we've got the mention to Clinton. Clinton comes up on page 75 in this drop. Clinton comes up in this email again between Sharon Churcher and uh, Virginia, who goes by Jenna. That's her nickname. That was true yesterday in the documents. It's true again today. And here, there's a quote that Bill Clinton apparently walked into Vanity Fair and threatened them not to write sex trafficking articles about, uh, here you go, about his good friend, J.E. Now, Virginia here is concerned that Vanity Fair might write a damaging article about her, especially since she at the time was talking about having an upcoming book release, like a tell-all on her experience being violated by Jeffrey Epstein. Sharon Churcher replies that uh, there's definitely a gamble and that uh, Virginia should sell the rights to certain photos to the uh, uh, company Sharon Churcher works for. Now, this is interesting because Maxwell actually responds to some of these things. Now, this is crazy. This is like this is like a YouTube drama where one person has an allegation and the other person does the response video or whatever. Maxwell responds, and here's what Maxwell has to say about Virginia. I can only uh, you can only guess. Uh, let's let me give you a quick brief summary. It's a lot of she's a liar and everything she's saying is wrong. But look at what Maxwell alleges. Maxwell responds that Virginia is seeking public attention to her fabricated story regarding Maxwell and Virginia was paid more than $100,000 for her false story to the Daily Mail as well as the sale of a photograph purporting to be of herself and Prince Andrew and the leaks to there it is. Sharon Churcher. Wow. Then on top of this, we get allegations that the Eps, uh, that Epstein uh, and Maxwell would use the experiences described by underage girls uh, as blackmail to basically extort more money out of people uh, who were using the Epstein and Maxwell services. Look at this page of this document set 9596 Epstein also sexually trafficked then minor Jane Doe making her available for sex to politically connected and financially powerful people Epstein's purposes in leading Jane Doe along with other young girls was uh, to such powerful people were to ingratiate himself 
with them for business, personal, political, and financial gain, as well as to obtain potential blackmail information. Okay, so how would potential blackmail information be obtained? Ah, well, here you go. Epstein also trafficked Jane Doe 3 for sexual purposes to many other powerful men, including numerous prominent American politicians, powerful business executives, foreign presidents, a well-known prime minister, and many other world leaders. Epstein required Jane Doe number 3 to describe events that she had with those men so he could potentially blackmail them. The government was well aware of Jane Doe 3 when it was negotiating the non-prosecution agreement. See, this statement of fact right here is actually put together by the defense attorneys for some of the girls who collectively are coming together uh, to report that Jane Doe 1, 2, and 3 were repeatedly sexually abused by Epstein and sexually trafficked. And that because the government signed a, quote, non-prosecution agreement negotiated by Alan Dershowitz for Epstein and himself and other co-conspirators, preventing them potentially from, from uh, uh, being prosecuted, the girls are suing saying, yo, government, you are screwing us because you're protecting Epstein. Why government would you be protecting somebody like Epstein? He's a pedophile and he's molesting children. And then of course, that's where a lot of people say, well, isn't it obvious they were involved? Yikes. Jane Doe 3 was approached by Maxwell, one of the main women whom Epstein used to procure underage girls for sexual activities and a primary co-conspirator in his sexual abuse and sex trafficking scheme. Maxwell herself regularly participated in Epstein's sexual exploitation of minors. Uh, Jane Doe 3 is believed, by the way, by me to be Emmy Taylor. Yesterday, we heard from some of the other depositions that Emmy Taylor was to believe to be so young that she was still in high school. And we heard a lot of allegations that the common age was anywhere between 15 to 21 for girls to be abused on Jeff Epstein's Island, uh, in New York, in Paris, uh, in France, what doesn't matter, Mexico, all around the world, uh, these girls were trafficked to provide massages to Epstein. Now, the manner of these massages, at least to Epstein, we found some more details today. And let's just, let me just preface this by saying the details aren't, particularly pleasant, but they're almost exactly the same every single time. Almost exactly the same. Basically, uh, Epstein uh, ends up at his house and they invite girls over. Here's an example of one who didn't do what Epstein wanted. So you can, you can imagine what happened. Uh, Epstein, uh, here's a girl who was first introduced to Epstein when she turned 18, so she was of age, but anyway, her goal was to provide, or job was to provide a massage to this Palm Beach guy, and so she met the booker in the kitchen, was brought upstairs while Epstein was getting ready for his massage, he exited his bathroom naked and turned around, Epstein asked her if being naked offended her, she said it made her uncomfortable, Epstein then put on a towel, and she started the massage, even though she had no massage experience. Epstein tried to touch her butt, in which point, at which point she said she was uncomfortable, and then she was paid $200 and asked to leave the house. That was one of the, uh, dare I say, ones who got away, uh, because most, unfortunately, of the girls were pressured into believing that because Epstein had a lot of money and power, it would be very bad to uh, up, uh, offend the Epstein uh, household. For example, here's one where a girl named Joanna Harrison, uh, who had also just turned uh, 18, uh, was asked if he had ever penetrated her. Harrison stated that during uh, his massage, or during Epstein's massage, he inserted his fingers into her vag vagina as she massaged him. She stated this occurred only one time. Uh, Harrison stated that the massage Harrison, uh, uh, well, Harrison stated the massage would be over when Epstein would climax onto a towel and then they would be paid basically to go away. 
Uh, here's one person that uh, actually didn't really click with Epstein. Apparently, Epstein didn't like girls with tattoos. Here was a licensed massage therapist who actually gave Swedish or deep tissue massages. She was only paid $100 because Epstein didn't really like her that much, apparently. And they made fun of her tattoos. There's another example uh, where uh, Epstein would pay a 17-year-old girl here to buy product from Victoria's Secret, uh, utilizing money given uh, to her by Epstein, uh, and then basically asked to come back and model uh, the, uh, the bra and panty set, model the outfit. Within the same week, she returned to have a massage uh, let's see, uh, uh, and then there's some other information here that's not so important. Uh, here's another one we have. This one, uh, this is Joanna. We had her deposition. Joanna stated that there were times that Epstein would ask her to perform during the massage. He would instruct her to rub his nipples as he masturbated himself. Joanna stated... She felt grossed out about his behavior, but she was also getting paid and just continued. Epstein would occasionally use a vibrator on her vagina area as she performed massages. Epstein also showered her with gifts and provided tuition payments for her college. She would also provide massages to a client we believe now is Glenn Dubin and his wife. These stories go on. They they go on not just with 18-year-olds, uh, but also of underage girls with uh, not just items that we've seen today, but also what we saw in yesterday's summary. So if you haven't seen yesterday's summary yet, make sure you uh, look at yesterday's summary. Uh, here's another one uh, where a girl was asked uh, to be, uh, to, to essentially take her clothes off while providing a massage, was offered $200. Uh, we also here have Mr. Rodriguez, who was employed by Jeffrey Epstein for about six months. And guess what Mr. Rodriguez got to do during his six months working for Epstein? He knew the girls were still in high school and were of high school age. I asked Rodriguez, this is an investigator, I asked Rodriguez about the massages. He felt there was a lot more going on than just massages. He would clean Epstein's bedroom after the alleged massages and would discover massager slash vibrators and sex toys scattered on the floor. He also said he would wipe down the vibrators and sex toys and put them away in the armoire. He described the armoire as a small wood armoire, which was on the wall close to Epstein's bed. He thought of himself as a human ATM machine, always having to have uh, $2,000, a minimum balance of $2,000 at any time to always be able to hand uh, $200 for a massage payment to Jeffrey Epstein. Another thing that we learned about Jeffrey Epstein is that Epstein liked a lot of massages. Rodriguez stated that Epstein would have two massages a day. Epstein would have one massage in the morning and one massage in the afternoon every day. In addition to this, we have uh, the desire for restitution from uh, individuals like Virginia, whom we've talked about a little bit uh, ago. On page 128, we will find how much money she is looking for and how she comes up with her total. There are some examples here of how she believes the psychological traumas that she uh, experienced were worth $102,000 in present value that she should be paid out. But it's not just that. Annual health expense services for of $1,700. Expected treatment costs of $102,000 on an annual basis, annual health care basis, adjusted for inflation. The loss of standing in the community, loss of dignity and invasion of privacy. $30 million payout, pain and sufferings in there as well. And then we're looking for another, let's see here, $30 million for defamation because Maxwell implied that the sexual abuse was an obvious lie. And therefore, 
Virginia, because she argues this is true, is demanding $30 million. Then she's also looking for lost income of $180,000 annually for every year. We've got growth rates in here. We've got present values in here. We've got loss of compensation of $5.4 million in here. This is what uh, Virginia is suing for. And then, of course, based upon all relevant factors, including the egregious nature of the defendant Maxwell's conduct, the need for a large award to punish and deter conduct in the view of the vast wealth of Maxwell in an amount of not less than $50 million in punitive damages. On page 195, we also hear from a detective. This is the detective's uh, invest, uh, the detective who led the investigation into Epstein, Joseph Riccari, guess what? Died suddenly after a, quote, brief illness at 50. Uh, this detective does go through a deposition and uh, reiterates a lot of what we've heard in the police reports about how they interviewed about 30 to 33 girls uh, and that most of them did not have massage experience, that they were asked to recruit other girls under the pretense, uh, pretense of giving massages, but then Epstein would attempt to fondle the girls or touch the girls inappropriately, at which point he would pleasure himself. And he was, when he was done, he would get up, wash off, and the girls would get dressed and go back downstairs and get paid. Work meant to come provide massage, massages to Epstein. Epstein would have multiple massages during the day. Morning, afternoon, sometimes into the evening. Some of the victims did not want to be touched, but some of them felt intimidated, came back anyway. It became well known to the public that Jeffrey Epstein had recruited high school girls to his house for the purpose of sexually uh, involved massages. The detective believed this obviously violated the law and so on. There's a little bit more detail here in terms of how he started and how they actually start describing this whole network as like a pyramid scheme uh, where one girl needed to re uh, recruit multiple other girls. So, so far we've got the uh, non-prosecution agreement. We got Bill Clinton. We got the blackmail. We got Alan Dershowitz. We got the detective. We got Maxwell's response. We got the restitution. We got the cleaner, cleaner Victoria's Secret tattoos. The last thing is the Tucker Carlson interview. Tucker Carlson, I'm going to keep this one short. Tucker Carlson had an interview with Mark Epstein, which is apparently Jeffrey Epstein's brother. When I was listening to it, I was a little bit sussed. I listened to the entire thing, but I was I felt like Mark Epstein was somebody who has just been really involved in this case, but didn't actually know anything until after Jeffrey Epstein died. That suspicion was somewhat corroborated when Mark said, quote, I had not seen Jeff for seven years prior to his death. We lived separate lives. So I personally didn't really enjoy Tucker Carlson's interview, not because I thought maybe Tucker Carlson didn't do a good job, but simply that I don't think that Mark really gave us anything proprietary that you couldn't get off of Google. So I was a little bit disappointed in the uh, Mark Epstein interview, mostly because a lot of what I heard from Mark was just well, I've heard from doctors, or I heard on podcasts, or I heard from, you know, uh, first responders, this, that, or whatever. So, uh, I, I, yeah, that was sort of my take on the Epstein, uh, the, the Mark Epstein interview on uh, that, the, that Tucker Carlson had. But otherwise, these are part two and part three. If you have not yet seen part one... Uh, make sure you go to ehack.com. I'm going to post more of a summary and the documents that we have here. These will be up soon. I'll publish these uh, on here, but I've already written some of the Epstein Files Part 2 on here, including a link to some of the documents. And if you scroll down a little bit more on ehack.com, you will also be able to see the Epstein Files from yesterday, short summary, along with the summary breakdown video, which is a good 25 minutes to catch you up to speed. So if you watch yesterday's video and today's video, you're caught up to speed on what's going on with the Jeffrey Epstein files. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of breakdown of finance or politics or drama or whatever it is. I'm Meet Kevin. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.
not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.